Hi everyone, my name is David and I'm one of the developers here on the Snowflake machine learning platform. Today, I'll be showing a demo of implementing a production modeling pipeline using Snowflake ML and GitHub Actions. For this demo, I'll be acting as a data scientist working on creating a model to predict mortgage loan application outcomes. My data is stored inside Snowflake as a table with a mixture of categorical and numerical columns, as well as a label column indicating whether the application should be approved. Let's jump right into the code. Here, I've defined a modeling pipeline, which can run on my local machine. In the first step, I'm pulling the data into Snowpark data frames, pre-processing it into usable features using the Snowflake feature store, and finally materializing that data into train and test data splits. I can then pass my training data set into my train function, where all I do is load that data into memory as a pandas data frame, then use standard open source XGBoost code to train my model. Once I've trained my model, I simply evaluate it against a few key metrics such as accuracy and precision, compare my model's performance against a predefined threshold, and if my model is of sufficient quality, I log it into my Snowflake model registry and promote it into production. This pipeline is sufficient for development scenarios where it's acceptable to pull the data into our local environment. However, we'll need to move away from this as we prepare to productionize our pipeline since we'll be training on larger production data sets with sensitive customer data. Using the new ML Jobs SDK, we can easily push our code execution into Snowflake, taking advantage of Snowflake compute and ensuring our data never leaves the Snowflake security boundary. We can use ML Jobs to dispatch individual functions, scripts, or even entire modules into Snowflake. Let's go ahead and convert our model training step into an ML job. Now. We'll first need to import the remote function decorator from the ML jobs SDK. We can then apply that decorator to our training function, specifying a compute pool on which we want our function to execute, as well as an internal stage where we can store any of our jobs artifacts. That's one uh, line is all we need to change our training function into an ML job submission. That means our, the return type from our function invocation is now an ML job object, which is a reference to the asynchronous job execution and we can, that we can use to check the job execution status, retrieve logs, or in this case, retrieve the execution result using the result API. In this case, that result is uh, the trained model. Let's give this a try now. So what does using ML jobs give us? It gives us, gives us access to the Snowflake container runtime, which was previously only available via Snowflake notebooks. This lets us lift and shift our code into Snowflake without any changes to our training code or restrictions on what packages and dependencies we can use. The container runtime comes pre-installed with a large suite of common data science and machine learning packages, but we can always specify additional packages or even specific package versions using the pip requirements argument or by providing a requirements.txt file with our payload. Using the container runtime also gives us access to the ML runtime APIs like optimized data ingestion using the data connector API and distributed training via the trainer APIs. We'll come back to this later. ML jobs run on Snowpark Container Services or SPCS meaning it benefits from SPCS's security guarantees, compute flexibility, and job observability, such as the new Services and Jobs UI, which is now in public preview. This UI shows an overview of all recent jobs that we can drill into to check the job execution status, logs, and soon a granular uh, view of compute metrics for optimization and debugging. ML jobs are highly flexible and support many different kinds of payloads. Here we showed the remote function decorator. There are also other submission methods such as submit file and submit directory for more complex payloads. ML jobs can be run from any environment such as VS Code and Jupyter Notebooks and are a great way to leverage Snowflake in your machine learning workloads. Okay, this is looking pretty good. We're ready to start productionizing our pipeline. Let's start by converting our pipeline into a production-ready task graph using a workflow orchestrator. Workflow orchestrators, or sometimes DAG frameworks, add resilience to our pipeline by, uh, by providing task granular error handling, 
run history, and schedulability. ML jobs can be run from any orchestration framework, such as Airflow or Daxter, but in this case, we will use Snowflake task graphs. Here I've created a Snowflake task graph, which effectively does the same steps as our local pipeline from before, but each as a separate uh, step. That is, we have this data preparation step, model training step, model evaluation step, and lastly, model logging step. Let's run this script now. Executing this script does not actually execute the DAG locally. Instead, it pushes my task graph definition into Snowflake, and the run DAG argument we've provided here instructs our script to trigger an ad hoc run of the pipeline inside Snowflake. Let's take a closer look at it inside the tasks UI in Snowsight. Here, we can see the ongoing task graph execution. Again, we first have the prepare data step, which is uh, generating my data sets for my latest feature data, running the model training job, evaluating the new model's performance, and conditionally promoting that model to production. I also have it set up such that if the model fails the quality check, it will send me an alert, so I know to manually investigate and remediate the issue. This is useful for situations where manual intervention is required to recover the model's performance, such as data concept drift or corrupted data sources. Lastly, we have a finalizer task to clean up any transient artifacts from graph execution. This will run even if my graph execution failed with an error. I can further configure my task graph to run on a schedule or on triggers, such as Snowflake mon model monitoring alerts and data quality alerts. The last step to productionizing our training pipeline is setting up CI CD to automatically deploy any changes we make to our code. Here, I've set up a GitHub Actions workflow for validating and deploying the pipeline into production. My workflow has two steps. The first step runs for every pull request and manually runs the pipeline in a staging environment. The second step runs only on merges into the main branch and deploys my modeling pipeline into production. Here we can see that instead of uh, manually triggering the, the task graph execution, we instead provide a schedule. Let's look at a recent run. The GitHub action is run using a dedicated service identity, which we've configured. This gives us better security and auditability and more flexibility in how we configure our RBAC policies for our dev, staging, and production environments. For example, we can lock down our production environment to only be accessible by this service role and admit, as well as administrators to prevent risk of data leakage. If we go back to the tasks UI, we can see the corresponding prod pipeline, which has been configured to run on a daily basis. As I monitor my modeling pipeline over the time, I notice I'm reaching the limits of my node's compute resources due to the increasing size of my production data set. Luckily, with ML jobs and the container runtime, I'm able to easily distribute my training across multiple nodes using the runtime distributor APIs. All I have to do is update my remote function decorator to request additional nodes import the distributed version of XGBoost Estimator, which is uh, part of the Snowflake ML namespace, replace the open source XGBoost classifier with the distributed XGBoost Estimator, and lastly, retrieve the open source XGBoost classifier from that distributed estimator after our model has been fit. The distributed APIs use Ray under the hood to efficiently parallelize data ingestion and computation. This unlocks distributed processing for massively parallel workloads and for handling very large data sets that cannot fit in a single node's memory.
Here we can see our multi-node job running. And we can inspect its logs again in the new jobs UI. 